Alright guys, welcome back. So in this episode, we're going to be focusing on the character and getting it functional in this game. So the first thing we need to do is we need to implement the character pack. So to do that, we need to first insert a new object. So right click and search for sprite. Click the screen and we're going to head over here and we're going to load image. We then want to head over to the mushroom warrior pack. Animations. We're going to then... First of all, let's select the idle animation. We're going to select them all. Okay. We have the animations here. We can click quick preview. And as you can see, it's far too slow. So what we need to do is select the animation up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the speed to twice the frame. So there's 23 frames. Well, there's 24 frames, including zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 48. We're going to check loop. And then let's play it back. Now, as you can see that's a lot smoother now so i'm happy with that for now what we want to do is we want to right click we'll rename this to idle and then we can then add some other animations like this i'm going to rename this one to walk this one to sprint and for this one we can do attack now we're just going to repeat the same process with the other animations. So we're going to go over, we're going to go to walk. Once again, control A, open. And once again, we're going to loop this and we're going to set the speed to 48. Like this. That looks good. Okay, and for sprint actually, so what we can do is we'll, uh, we'll delete this one actually. And we can now just Control C, Control V to duplicate the walk animation. Rename it to Sprint again. And for this one, we can just set the animation speed to maybe let's just say 70. Like this. So that's a nice easy way to get the sprint working. And for the attack animation, um, my mistake, we actually want to, we don't need that yet. We can delete that. Because for the attack animation, we're actually going to have a separate sprite. So that when we're running or jumping, we can have a separate sprite of the sword and the hand just to keep the animation nice and smooth. So this is great for now. Last thing we need to do for the animations and the sprite here is we need to just set up the collision. So as you can see, we have this blue box around the character. We just want to set the correct dimensions. This is because whatever, when we set up the character attacks or an enemy hitting our character, such or even if we take fall damage, anything like that, this is what the player can interact with. So I'm just, I'm going to keep the bottom two at the feet. I'm going to delete the rest. And I'm just going to make a rectangle. So I can just copy the X. Like so. And then for this one, copy the X again. Like this once we've done that we can right click and we can just apply it to the whole animation or even better we can just apply to all animations and now as we can see they all have the same collision okay so we can come out of here for now we've now got this character here so next let's get the character collisions working so to do this the first thing we need to do is we need to give it the platformer behavior so this is going to make it actually behave like a platform character so all you have to do is go to behaviors we're going to search platform and by default this will now add some walking mechanics so to start off with it will use the arrow keys however we're going to change this shortly we're going to go into the event sheets and we're going to set up so it works with WSAD space and we're going to attack with the mouse the next thing we need to do is let's just go over to behaviors again and we're going to add a solid and we also want to do the same thing with the tile map so we're going to go over here and as you can see, I already added this earlier when I was testing, so it's going to go into behaviors and you same again, add a solid. And now the character should, there we go, yep. So as you can see, the character now interacts with the tile set. You can move around like so. So great. Next thing we want to do, let's add the sword. So we can go insert new object, sprite. And for this, we're going to go into animations, sword, 
Reflect all. Like this. We can click the collision stain, that looks fine. We can rename this to attack. And for the speed, let's say it to maybe 20. Let's try 25. That looks better. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to pin this object to the character. So what we'll do is we'll first line it up correctly. So I'm going to right click the character and I'm going to send it to the top of the layer. And then as best you can, we just want to align this up like so. And now I'm going to rename this quickly before I forget. So let's call this one sword and we'll call the character well, actually, we'll just call it character. So we want to select the sword, and we're going to head over to behaviors, new behavior, and search pin. Now what we need to do is we need to head over to the blueprints. We need to add an event, system. And we're going to go on start of the layout. We're going to get the sword, and we're going to pin to object. So select here, pin to object. And we're going to choose character X, Y. We don't want to pin to the angle. Everything else keep the same and done. And now if we start, as you can see, our sword is now connected to the character. Okay, so next let's change the control system and we will also add the animations for the character. First thing we need to do is we need to insert two new objects. We need to insert a keyboard. And we also need to insert a mouse. So once you've done that, you'll see them on the right here. This is going to allow us to now reference those in the event sheet. Also, select your character and just make sure that you um, deselect default controls. And now we're ready to go into the event sheet. And we're going to add an event. And we're going to go keyboard. We're going to go key is down. So on key is down. And then press A. So when the A key is down, we then want to set the character to simulate the control going left. So we go character. We can search simulate control. And then we want the controls to be left. We can then control C and control V this. And once again, we'll do the same thing, but to move right. So we can select this. I'm going to use a D key. We then want to simulate that going right. Again, we can repeat this control C, control V. And then this time we're using the space bar. And then we want to simulate jump. Like so. So now we're able to use WSAD and the space bar to jump. So this just feels much more natural. Next, what we can do is we want to do the animations. So on key is down. We can go to character, set animation, and we want to have the walk animation. We can copy and paste this for the key. Okay, next what we want to do is we want to make it so that when the character is not moving, we want to be using the idle animation. So we can just right click, add event, character, scroll down until you see platform, and we want to check is moving. Double click that. And now what we want to do is, because we want to make this so that when they're not moving, we want to select this and just, if you press the I key, this now sets it to inverted, so now it is not moving. And then, so once again, we can just copy one of these. We can paste this in, and we can then just set the animation to idle. Like so. So now if we test this, we should now be able to, yep, so when we walk around, the character's now animated. It walks left and right, and we can jump. When we stop, we're going to the idle animation. Okay, next, let's get the sprint working. So what we can do is we can head over to here, and what we want to do is we want to right click, and we want to add a blank sub event, and we can duplicate this, and we go to key, and we want to select, so once again, we want to get keys down. So we're going to keys down. 
I'm going to select shift and also actually what we want to do is we want to copy this paste this in here and invert it with I again actually we can keep this even we can keep this separate actually so what we could do is we can A is down simulate left if shift is not down we can walk and then we can just have this like so so when A is pressed down we can walk left if shift is not pressed we will set the animation to walk However, if shift is pressed, we will then set the animation to sprint. So when our character is sprinting, we also want to increase the speed. So to do this, we need to head over to the character. We want to search max speed. So we want to set max speed. And let's just set this to 500. And we can copy this. And when shift is not down, we can set this to 330, which is the default speed. Okay, so next let's just quickly duplicate this for the right movement. So what I'm going to do is just copy the whole thing here. So just copy A key. Let's delete this one. And we can just paste again at the bottom. And we can then just quickly set this to D. And then we'll simulate to move right. Like so. We can then drag this back up here. And now we have us both separate things. So we have... When A is down, we move left. When shift is not down, we walk and we set the speed to 330. However, if shift is pressed, we sprint and we will set the speed to 500. And the same applies to when you move to the right. Let's test this anyways. Okay, great. So when we still still got idle, we move left and right. And then if we hold shift, we now sprint backwards. We hold shift, we sprint forwards. And the animation is nice and smooth. Okay, great. I'm happy with that. Okay, so the last animation we need to set up is the attack animation. So what we're going to do is add another event. And this time we're going to choose mouse. And then we're going to select right here on click. Left clicked. And then we're going to once again we're going to go character. Set animation. Actually no, we don't want to use character this time. We want to select sword. Set animation. We're going to select attack like this now what we do need to do is we need to head back into the character and we need to add a new animation call this idle and then we need to just what we're going to do is we're going to copy this so we're going to select this up here the selection tool we're going to drag out we're going to control C and then we're just going to paste this in to the idle animation so select the sword again and then down to the bottom left, we just want to make sure that the initial animation, we want that to be idle. And then on top of that, okay, and then what we need to do is we need to set it so that when the attack animation finishes, we then go back to idle. So we can just go add another event. We can go sword. We can just search finish. So we go on finished. Attack. So our attack animation finished, we then want to set the animation to idle. There we go. So on left button clicked, we set the attack animation, and then once the animation is finished, we go back to idle. So let's check this. Okay, great. So now when we click, we get attack animations. We've got a sprint, back and forth, we can jump, we can attack. Awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.